I think nuclear has a very real stigma against it, and it's partially grounded in fact, partially grounded in fiction. Let's start with the facts. Nuclear power produces radioactive waste, and that stuff is nasty. It's, it can be radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years, and we've got to put it away somewhere, somewhere where we can guarantee, if, if one can even do so, that it's not going to contaminate future generations. There are other nuclear power plant designs which produce much shorter lived waste on the hundreds to thousands of years, but even then, I mean, who knows what we're going to be doing in a hundred thousand years, right? Whether we'll even be on this planet anymore. That's a big problem, and it's going to continue to be a big problem, but I would argue it's worth the cost because of the very real problem we have today of climate change. You wouldn't know it from looking outside, you know, the Charles River is frozen today, but when you when you look at sort of heat maps of how the global temperature is changing, it's changing in an increasing slope, which means it's getting worse and worse and quicker and quicker. And the time between today and the sort of point of no return when polar ice caps are going to start melting and Greenland's going to be, you know, green, right? Uh, that's getting smaller and smaller. And we have a very urgent need to stop climate change today. And I'm willing to accept the future risk of nuclear waste, which we're very good at locking up and keeping it there so far. Now granted, we've only got a few decades of experience, because we've only had nuclear power for a few decades, but I am confident that we can solve that problem long in the future to solve a bigger problem today. Now let's get into the fiction. The whole problems with radiation is, it's been hammered into us in popular media that all radiation is bad, that it's going to do terrible things to you and your children. The fact is, we're getting irradiated right now, and every single life form has been irradiated since the beginning of time and the beginning of life. We've evolved in a naturally radioactive environment. So I like to actually show this to my students, where uh, I ask them to do things like calculate the radioactivity of a banana. And the first question is like, what do you mean? Is my food really radioactive? I say, yeah. There's potassium in the banana, and all potassium on Earth, 0.011% of it, is naturally radioactive. And we eat it all the time, and you need potassium for your neurons to function. And people say, well, isn't radiation bad? And I say, a lot is, but a little is not. In fact, there's been lots of studies to show that a little bit of radiation doesn't have any statistically bad effects on you. What that means is, one study may say, oh, we saw a little bit more cancer. Some studies actually show people get less cancer with a little bit of radiation. But the spread's too large to make a determination. Only when the dose gets really high, thousands of times above what anyone could be exposed to by law, can you say, yes, there's a bad effect. And we do know that a lot of radiation is a bad thing for people, but we don't get a lot. So to get the students to tell me how radioactive is a banana, I try to get them to calculate it, and it can be a little hard, and I say, let's make a measurement. So last year, I bought them 1,000 pounds of bananas. And I told everyone, take 50 pounds home, burn them to a crisp in the oven, collect all the ashes, and let's stick them in our gamma spectrometer, our sort of radiation counting device, and let's measure it. And it turns out that if you were to eat 1,000 pounds of bananas, you would still have 1,000 times too little radiation that's been known to cause cancer. So you'd have to eat a million pounds of bananas to get a radioactive effect. And I think you'd be suffering from, I call it hypersonic diarrhea before you'd see any radiation effects. So now let's get into the question. When people are asked, would you live near a nuclear plant? Almost everybody says, oh, hell no. I don't want to live near something emitting radiation. They don't emit radiation. Nuclear plants give off less radiation than coal power plants. And you'd think like, oh, I'll, sit, I'll live kind of near a coal power plant. It's basically just a big fire, right? Well, turns out that coal's radioactive too. It's not very radioactive, but when you take a ton of coal and you burn away all the carbon, the stuff that's left releases more radiation to the surrounding environment than what's allowed to be released from nuclear plants. This is barring any sort of accident. Uh, you know, on U.S. soil, which we've had one near miss, Three Mile Island, and we tend to be pretty damn good at nuclear safety. You know, that's the worst that's ever happened here. Pretty cool. Um, in terms of living 50 miles from a nuclear plant versus 50 miles from a coal plant, you get something like, I forget what the exact number is, but it's three to ten times the excess radiation dose living near a coal plant. There is a lot of laws and regulations against nuclear plants releasing any amount of radiation that has any noticeable effect on any member of the public. 
They simply can't. There is also an exclusion zone around plants where you're not allowed to live. You know, you can't have a house where the building next door is a nuclear power plant. And that's to make sure if something goes wrong, it can be contained and it doesn't affect the people nearby. So this, this whole misnomer of, you know, nuclear plants emit radiation, no, they don't. Not above levels that you wouldn't get from other sources anyway. So I won't say nuclear plants don't emit radiation because bricks emit radiation, bananas emit radiation, you and I emit radiation. It's actually another question I had my students calculate is how much dose do you get from spooning? If you sleep next to another person for one night, how much radiation do you get? The number's more than zero, but it's negligible.